feels though he understands my body more, you know. As the gruesome Luca Magnotta murder trial continues in Montreal, we're about to show you video of the confessed killer that's never been made public before. In this City News exclusive, Avery Haynes reveals how one Toronto woman unknowingly welcomed Magnotta into her own home. My name's Luca, and uh, I don't live on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> Charming, good-looking, gregarious, and not yet a confessed killer. My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. You know? This is never-before-seen video of a now-notorious Luca Magnata in a 2009 screen test for a Toronto documentary on bisexuality. Is it still on now, or? Yep, yep. it's always oh, on. Do yeah. I just keep going? Or? But don't worry about it. Like, don't even think okay. about these guys. Yeah. Okay, my name's Luca, and I'm a bisexual. Playing for the camera, Magnata reveals intimate details about himself. I tend to have a lot of uh, male partners. I'm uh, struggling with myself. I know, like, in myself, like, what I am, and I know that I'm bisexual. And how he once acted as an escort for a high-profile downtown couple. They would call me as a profession. Uh, when I say professional, I mean escort. They'd be very scared, mm -hmm. and I would have to, you know, go in there and uh, show them like how to do things. And, and that couch Magnata is sitting on is this couch in this house owned by this woman. Not only did I run across evil, I invited evil into my house. Suzanne Babin is a documentary producer who met Luca Magnata after he answered her casting call. We put out a, a wide ad saying, confused about your sexuality. And then we said, we're doing a documentary, we'd like to meet you. There was a flood of response, but only the top 10 were given an on-camera callback. So you open up your front door to... Luca Magnata. And I was extremely happy to see him. And when Magnata first walked in, she thought she hit pay dirt. Articulate, well put together, um, attractive. And I thought, boy, this guy has a lot of potential. He's going to make great TV. Exactly. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> this guy who you know is Luca is not only yeah. in your house, but he's with your daughter and your partner. Meeting my family. I think the whole world is a bisexual community because to some extent we're all bisexual. I was as close to him as I am to you. And I didn't sense the fact that he could do something horrible to me. I just thought, well, oh, he's not going to make good TV. He's too eager and he's kind of creepy. And it's that creepiness that Suzanne says led her to cutting Magnata from the documentary. You know, there are people who just like to be on camera. And I really felt he was trying to find out what I wanted and he would be what I wanted. And, oh, it kind of gave me, it just gave me a really weird feeling. And then the news broke, making international headlines with gruesome images and horrible crimes. I had never seen his picture. and. I just kept on thinking, boy, that is such a weird, scary story. And then I got a call from my colleague saying, that is the same Luca we interviewed. We're talking in my house, in my living room. It was terrifying. Since I found out, I watched the coverage less because I'm a bit too unnerved. Now that video of Luca Magnata offers some compelling insight into a man in the spotlight now for a monstrous crime. We do have more of the outtakes from that afternoon in Riverdale up on our website citynews.ca. You can reach out to me on Twitter about this or any other story. I am at City Avery.